here to talk about the rereading that I did in the year of 2021. I'm finding that the longer I read, as I'm thinking about you know, the upcoming months, I keep thinking about what can I reread in this next year? Um, and I just really treasure rereading. Um, so I'll tell you about the books that I reread. And the first is Sense and Sensibility. Now, unfortunately, a bit of a downer with this one. I think I feel the same way about Sense and Sensibility that Claudia from Spinster's Library does in that I like the movies better. And I really love equally the 1995 um, and 2008. I think it's like, I always like this book in theory and then I read it and I'm just a little bored. I'm a little bored, um, especially compared to her, Jane Austen's other books. And especially compared to when I'm reading Emma or Pride and Prejudice, it's just kind of no comparison. It's like, I like the bare bones of Sense and Sensibility. I love the concept of the plot, um, but I just get restless in the story. And unfortunately, the last time I read it, I really struggled with Eleanor and Marianne as characters. And I know, I know they are much beloved characters. And I love what Jane Austen is doing with them, contrasting their personalities, all of that. I just struggle with it. So um, then I reread Adam Bede. And this was just as amazing as the first time that I read it. I, I was more emotionally invested the second time around. And there are some really upsetting things that um, are inspired by true events. I did not realize until I read the back flap of my Penguin edition that I had. Um, it's inspired by real events. And um, it's really, really sobering. And there's some hard things in it. Um, I just adore Elliot's writing. I just adore it. She is a stunning, stunning wordsmith. And so this was a really great reread. I was ready to revisit it. And then I reread The Other Bennett Sister. <laughs> I read it for the first time in February, and then I reread it in July. And I loved it just as much the second time. And I'm seriously already ready to reread it again. That's how much I love the story. I think there's something so comforting about going back to these familiar characters. And I am a very hard sell on an Austin retelling. It's really hard for me to like it, but I cannot, I implore you to pick this book up. It is about Mary and what her life was like after the end of Pride and Prejudice. It does start out where Pride and Prejudice has not ended yet, but then the vast majority of the book, around 75% um, of the book is after Pride and Prejudice has ended. So I will definitely be rereading it once, if not twice in the next year, because I've just come to more and more love rereading. Then I reread most of the Betsy Tacy series, and this is going to be a way of life for me. It has been a way of life for me. And I love getting to see these characters as I get older and kind of just to maybe start to identify with the parents a bit more in it. And Betsy is such a dear, dear friend to me. And I love that she was real because Maud was Betsy, Maud the author. And um, it's been really fun being more connected with the Betsy Tacy community through the Betsy Tacy Society. And I had the real privilege of interviewing two of the Betsy Tacy Society um, committee members on my channel. And then I also loved getting to do a video with several other um, booktube friends that had read the Betsy Tacy series and talk about what they liked about it. And um, just, I want Betsy Tacy to continue to be a re regular part of my reading life. Um, not necessarily making it through the whole series in a year, but I, I really hope a year does not go by for the rest of my life that I don't read at least one of the books from the Betsy Tacy series. And then I reread Miracles on Maple Hill. This is honestly a reread I would love to have every year with the audiobook. That is a way that I really come to feel connected to a lot of books. And um, since uh, The Other Bennett Sister was another one that I've only read as audiobook. And Miracles on Maple Hill has a multicast audiobook. I know it's not for everyone. Some people don't like the voice of the main character, Marley, but I really, really love it. And um, it's just such a glorious story of beauty healing. And it's just a remarkable book. And then I reread The Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers. And I feel, I remember the first time I was reading it, I thought, I... I'm not worthy to be reading this book. It's so poetic and there is so much about 
doing the right thing, even when it's so hard and agonizing and you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And it's just a stunning, stunning piece of literature with so many wonderful characters. And I just have decided that Sam is my absolute favorite. There are so many amazing characters in there, Gandalf and Aragorn. And I mean, all of the hobbits and Eowyn and Aemir and Gimli and Legolas. I mean, just so many amazing characters, but I do think Sam tops them all for me. And so I just find myself so moved by this beautiful, beautiful story. And I cannot wait to read The Return of the King in the New Year. I'm not kidding. I have like butterflies in my stomach just thinking about getting to read it. So my husband has agreed to rewatch the the trilogy with me after I finish reading The Return of the King. So, but we are... <laughs> We like to go to bed early. We go to bed around 9.30, so it will take us a long time to get through them, but I don't mind that. I love sa slowly savoring um, the Lord of the Rings movies. And it's been a good, I think, five years or longer since I've watched them. So it is long, long overdue, and we're totally doing the extended editions. Um, so that will be a lot of fun. And then I reread Middlemarch. I did this with Adam from Memento Mori and Kate from the novel Nomad. And it was just such a treat to read with them. Middlemarch, I, I kind of think Middlemarch might be my favorite George Eliot. Um, Daniel Deronda is way up there too, but I think that maybe Middlemarch is the least painful of her books as far as what happens in the plots. But I do know um, I have not done with Felix Holt, so I can't tell you how how um, kind of heartbreaking Felix Holt is, but just Middlemarch, there is something about it. And it has been such a joy for me to watch Mary from Mary Among Stories. She fell in love with Middlemarch and it was one of those, and this is what happens with a lot of people because it's a quieter book, that you finish it and you're like, oh yeah, it was good. And then the longer that you're done with it and it has, you sit with it longer and longer, it just slowly settles in and just you have a Middlemarch shaped hole in your heart and it just, it has a way of, grabbing you and and not letting you go and I just I love it for it um then uh, this summer I finally reread To Kill a Mockingbird it had been a good seven years since I had read that and I love this book um because there is there are just so many hard issues that are tackled in it but tackled in such a gentle way really hard things and heartbreaking things that happen in this and so many unfair things that happen and things that are just such human issues that are never going to be questions that we aren't pondering. I love To Kill a Mockingbird. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it. Wives and Daughters, I reread in May. I'll be rereading it again this year. It is such an old and dear friend. I love the gentle domesticity of this book with characters that I can love and adore. And I do like to, whenever I reread it, I like to then rewatch the miniseries because it has a satisfying conclusion. The book lacks a few pages at the end, which is, that is the biggest heartbreak of my life is that Elizabeth Gaskell was not able to finish Wives and Daughters. Um, so I love to finish, a, you know, follow up a reread of it with, um, with rewatching the miniseries. And then The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. This is the first in her Books of Bayern series. Taylor from The Babbling Bee and I started to reread or to read the Books of Bayern and we st or started with The Goose Girl because that's the first one. And it, it's going to be really, it's a hard act to follow for me. I then read Anna Burning and I really did not enjoy Anna Burning because I love The Goose Girl so much and it's just such a fabulous story and I love all of the traveling that happens in it. I really love fairy tale retellings that have characters that you can really come to love and you get to see them go, you know, traveling from place to place and getting to meet new people and trying to make a life for themselves and something about it I just love. So hopefully in the next year, Taylor and I will continue through the books of Bayern because I do want to, you know, see what happens in River Secrets and Forest Born. And I really just, I love a good solid character driven fairy tale retelling. And then I reread Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. It's fun to think back um, on the reading year because these were some, you know, fun events that happened. Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day was uh, the book that won. I did a like World Book Day book battle and um, we all did a reading 
um, from a different book and this one was the one that won and it was really fun. Then we had a Zoom discussion of this. I really love this book. Unfortunately, I didn't love it more the second time around. I loved it kind of equally, but I was also in a really weird reading mood when I did read it. So I really enjoyed it. And if you love like a really sharp, witty, modern classic, this is a great one to read. And then Mansfield Park. What an unexpected highlight of my reading year this was. I decided begrudgingly to reread Mansfield Park for Jane Austen July. I did not like it the first time I read it. I said, I will read a chapter a day. I will finish it by the end of the month. This is going to be so painful. And then I read it in three days. How did that happen? I don't, I was not striving. To, I, this is not at all a competition. Like I, I just, I, I could not put it down. It would not let me go. I had to keep reading. Did I know the ending? Yes. I was riveted. And I finally get it now when people talk about Fanny Price and how amazing of a character she is. I loved Mansfield Park. I was not expecting that at all. What I was expecting though was then I reread Emma and I love Emma. Um, I love it so much. She is a character that can really be off-putting to some people, but I love that you get to see all of the growth that happens with her. I love Emma. Um, then Coming Home by Rosamond Pilcher. I want to periodically continue to host Rosamond Pilcher read-alongs on my channel because the people that love Rose, Rosamond Pilcher out there really love Rosamond Pilcher and we're just so excited when we get to interact with other people who also love her. It feels a bit like the Betsy Tasty Club um, because Rosamond Pilcher had her day with like middle-aged women in the 1990s. So now when I meet other people that like her, I'm like, oh my goodness, we're a rare breed now. Um, I just, I adore her. And I think if you have seen the BBC show, BBC series, As Time Goes By, that to me is all of the vibes of a Rosamond Pilcher book. And I love it so much. So yes, Coming Home follows Judith over a long span of years um, and growing uh, into a young woman and World War II is happening uh, towards the middle of the book and then it ends and then all of the ramifications of everything that happens during World War II and such a good book. So it did take me, I got a little nervous as I was reading it. It took me about 200 pages to get into it again. And I thought, oh no, do I not love this book anymore? But once I got in, then I just was so riveted. So I loved coming home and I'm currently reading, um, it's right there, Winter Solstice. And I'm loving that um, just as much. So really looking forward to on the 15th of the month. I don't know if this is going out before or after that, but discussing Winter Solstice. So then at some point later in the year, I'm going to be hosting another Rosamond Pilcher read-along. Um, then, what's the next one on the list? <gasps> Christy by Catherine Marshall. This is one that is, it has got to be reread more regularly and I need to finally get myself a copy. But I mean, do I though? Because it's really fun to pick up things at the library. The library, I've decided it just is my favorite building in the whole entire world. I love the library. Um, something about this book, you just are really doing life with these characters. She, Christy comes to this really impoverished community to be a teacher and she thinks she has everything figured out and she is just going to teach them so much and it is just, she learns so much from them. There are some really sad things in this. It's based on some true events of uh, that happened to the author's mother when she was a teacher in a small community like this. Um, it's hard to tell where fact and fiction like pick up or leave off, but it is such an amazing story of this community and um, Fairlight Spencer will be, always be one of my favorite book characters. Oh, I just adore her so much. So love, love, love. Christy. Uh, then Lady Audley's Secret. I was nervous to go into this because it is very plot-based and pulpy and I just didn't know how I would feel about it, but I loved this story all over again. I listened to the audiobook. I, uh, I think I read the physical book the first time. This time around I listened to the audiobook. I love the character of Alicia or Alicia. Yeah, Alicia. That's what it was. Um, she is Lord Audley's daughter. And she, to me, was the highlight of the book. Like, I loved her. She was such a strong woman. And any scene she was in, I was just so riveted. Um, and I think this is just a great 
plot-based Victorian sensation novel. So definitely one of my favorite Victorian books. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, then Wuthering Heights. I mean, one of my, there it is, Wuthering Heights, all-time favorite Victorian novels. I just, I love Wuthering Heights. And um, I had a lot of fun too filming a discussion of Wuthering Heights with my husband. He read it and um, I will try if I'm remembering while I'm editing to link it down below because it was really, really fun getting to hear his perspective, it being his first time. He was not familiar with the story and getting acquainted with all those characters. Just, it was, it, it was really fun. So I'm hoping, don't tell him this, but I'm hoping each Victober that maybe he would read a Victorian novel of my choosing. Or I think I let him pick between a couple books and he chose Wuthering Heights. And maybe then we could do his thoughts on it each Victober, but I haven't told him that yet. Um, then uh, I reread The Christmas Hirelings, also by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, same author of Lady Audley's Secret, and I really like this one. This, uh, I, so I read this with my Patreon book club, and some patrons thought it was kind of saccharine, and others were like, no, I liked it. So I think if you like the Louisa May Alcott kind of level of sweet in Little Women, that this will be right at the, it's a, it's a fine line, but I think I still, I, I think it's not too, too saccharine for me. I just like having really sweet stories at Christmas. Um, but I think also I, I enjoy that. And then reading something like the night before Christmas by Gogol, which is so, oh, so otherworldly and such a different kind of Christmas story. So I wouldn't want to just read very sweet Christmas stories like this, but it was just really, really lovely. And there's some very endearing, little children characters in it. Um, and then lastly, The Hobbit by Tolkien. I just, it is such solid storytelling. And I love that The Hobbit exists because I think the Lord of the Rings trilogy is, it's quite a feat to take on as a reader. Like I love, you know, thinking about, wow, it's really challenging to read when someone wrote it. Like, can you imagine writing the Lord of the Rings? But it's quite a feat to take on. So I love that The Hobbit exists because if you're just in the mood for the whimsy and kind of being in Middle Earth, The Hobbit is a great avenue then to take because it is so um, pacey. I had forgotten there is so much that happens. There are really not many points that drag in it. And I just adore that story so much. So I think it would take me a long time to tire of The Hobbit. Um, and it's just such a fun thing to get to share with Peter because he was he was all in as we were listening. I read it to him two years ago. He really didn't remember much and so he was very invested and it was just we were you know on a road trip as we were listening and whenever I would pause it like uh, to I don't know to make a phone call or something because we listened on my phone then as soon as I was done mom hobbit are you gonna put it back on? He was waiting he was ready. Oh so I just feel I have this warm glow after talking about the rereads that I did this year. Please let me know the books that you love to reread. Um, it, it's just really, it's a very different beast to reread a book than to read a new favorite. Um, and most books that become favorites of mine, I enjoy them more as rereads than I did that first time. Like there is a real wonder and an awe to the first time that you read it. But I think as long as it lives up to those expectations, I enjoy rereading them even more. Thank you as always for watching and I will be back with another video soon. Bye.